you know, specific to what RPA is as a technology set, as a tool set, the maturity of the technology, where it's still going in terms of other features you may have heard of that are on the horizon. If I want to get into RPA today, both from a technology perspective and from a business process design perspective and from a um, human impact perspective, which may not be your domain, but uh, if you had to do it over again, everything you've done with RPA, what, what are the main lessons you've learned? Shall I start, uh, Baron? <laughs> yes. <laughs> do mine. <laughs> Well, um, the main lesson we learned is that uh, we just begun with robotics. We had a we had a main group. We didn't think about the governance. We didn't think about how to deploy our RPA environment. Um, we didn't have coding standards. Uh, we didn't thought about it. Um, we didn't have a, um, a good landing zone um, that the teams could use. So what you mainly see uh, in organizations is uh, they start with uh, RPA because all the managers wanted to reduce the costs. Um, you make robots on device automation, they just click. And uh, after that, uh, um, you you uh, see those robots clicking and you think this, this could be do very better, smarter, easier. And that's where the teams uh, are coming in like Berend. Um, so I think you can um, you can you can start with a good governance. You can start with a good platform. You can start with the the best application for your uh, I said it for your uh, company. Um, and if you have choose that application that you want to use, uh, then you can do uh, or device automation or web based automation. So make a mm -hmm. choice when doing it. <laughs> and we didn't make that. Make the right choice. <laughs> yeah. Well, mainly in the in the beginning is make make a choice is good enough if you just make a choice already. That's that's because mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> because we well you you can also just talk and talk and talk and talk uh, on these kind of decisions uh, and 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 never get a get a decision. Um, so yeah, make a decision. <laughs> Now, and I want to add one other thing, um, um, and it's it it's not a warning, but it's uh, something you should be aware of. Um, robots sometimes have the uh, well, we we it's also uh, hung up on low code and uh, easy to make, and everyone can do it. Mm -hmm. um, be aware that it is an it, it is an art it well it's it's something you should uh do on a day on a daily basis it's not something that is an add-on an extra um because it, it is uh it it's not it's not that simple i i didn't see a lot of robots which are really really simple and um, that's mainly because when you start, it's it, it generally it happens like this: we have a a, a so-called simple robot, and then oh yeah, but then can we do this as well? Oh, can we do this as well? And can we? Do, and then you start to grow, and you have to 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 make the right decisions, and you have to hold on to your your coding standards or whatever uh, decisions you made in in the beginning, like like Evan said. Um, but it th there are hardly any simple robots there is always something where you need to log in which is a <clears throat> pain in the ass or uh, uh certificates uh which you need to use to get secure communication or it's all it's always something which makes it it challenging mm -hmm. not undoable but uh it, it's not something like oh yeah we have uh you have like two hours spare time make a robot mm -hmm. i don't believe in it i, I think I think you also just uh, must know that you are involved with software devel development. You you really release pieces of software that are called robots. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's not a out of the box plugin that <laughs> that no. simply no. Okay. No. And no. You're, you're helped a lot, really a lot by the platform, but it's not it's not as as simple as as one might suggest. And and I guess that 
brings us to architecture or it brings us back to architecture as as Kevin was saying earlier <laughs> and and how much you know decision points as to how much logic should go into bots as opposed to um, external components or services or applications the bot the bots may need to interact with you that separation of concerns is something that you constantly have to think about because if you have feature creep such as what you just described when your stakeholders want more and more functionality in the bot at some mm -hmm. point you just say well let's just slice that out put it in a, in a separate service that the bot will call and interact with and keep the logic in the bot to um some simple form, maybe not oversimplified, but is that a decision point you find yourself constantly having to make, or, or it, are there are there performance benefits or other functional benefits to putting more related bot logic in the same bot software? Um, that's a difficult one because. Um... Yeah. <laughs> Actually, it depends, <laughs> and uh, that 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 sounds a bit tacky, but it it really does because um, we we try to make robots. Um, if you have a string of robots, we try to make each robot somewhere in a process in an endpoint where someone can do something with it, mm -hmm. which is by itself difficult enough. Um, and you don't always succeed. So uh, if you want uh, uh, a, 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 a few steps in the flow, um, sometimes you 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 don't uh, you're not you're not able to to make every step count and give back something useful. You need four bots to have a, a, a part of the a flow um, robotized, which is useful for your um, uh, for 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 whoever. Mm -hmm. um but we we try to make something which is usable and i think as long as you do that um you always have the right discussion if you uh if you want to add on your functionality and then also if you make the the bots smaller you you it's easier to say well okay then we do another bot uh, but you already have this you have to wait a little bit maybe or mm -hmm. um we make it in a different bot and then it's it's we can either take out that bot if we have a separate service for that that piece of of uh, flow um but in some cases it is um um it, it is functionality which is um uh, you want to keep together uh for whatever reason uh, we do uh, we do um um how do you inventory um uh, so how much uh, work uh, is there to be done on a daily basis we have one robot who, in one application, counts all all the information and all the work that is uh, waiting to be done. Um, we could make that in four, five, six di different robots, but then you have to, if robot one fails and robot if robot one goes, robot two who goes, robot three fails, um, you have to maybe go back into the first two robots to change something. So in that case, it's easier to make everything in one big robot. It, you have to make it very structured and readable and, and uh, why you took decisions put in your robot so uh, you know what you're doing. But then at least you don't have to, if in, in, in a piece of a flow something went wrong, you can, you can try and catch uh, the error as a whole. Which mm -hmm. makes it um, uh, easier overall. So it it really depends on what what kind of uh, robot. If you're building something for one application, or it's a flow, or it's it yeah it it it, it, it like I said it it depends. But but it first depends. you need to identify the least you need to know, and yeah. then you can build the robot. Uh, maybe maybe you can build the robot. Uh, with the with the least, and then you you add branches. Yeah, yeah, we like MVPs quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, because you you have, you have something which is usable. So uh, and, and people get used to the fact that there is not only themselves working in a process, but there's also a a, a robot uh, doing stuff. Right. 
And then there's the footprint of the robot itself, with which you may not want to have too too large for it to be performant, for it to support the type of scalability you might need. So that it, it's really interesting. I mean, it, it it goes back into distributed architecture, application design principles, and they they apply here, but in sort of a unique manner because this is not just your everyday software program. It's not your vanilla no. component or service. This is a specialized <laughs> um, part of your architecture that, like you said, you you can't just say we can follow one practice. You have to look at it on a case by case basis because each task a, a, a robot does will will be unique. Will have unique requirements because it replaces a unique human role.